Happy Wednesday. Hard to believe that we're almost halfway through the week already, depending on how long your week is. My week goes seven days, so not quite there yet, but almost. Um, anyways, hope this finds you faring well. Tonight, I am a little, a little exhausted, uh, more so than, than the usual. I think I may have mentioned that um, we started working out uh, once we put the kids down. We do a, we do a class a night. Um, and realistically, I didn't, I didn't work out much before this. Now I had a very, very active lifestyle. I used to kind of kid around with people and say I stay thin through stress and scare stairs. I climb a lot of stairs every day and I have a high level of stress. Um, and that usually keeps me pretty, pretty fit. I also ride horses, um, on a competitive level. So I'm active, but I never really did work out classes, at least not in the near, in the near past. Um, and part of when we started to realize that we were not moving around as much, we decided to commit to this. Some nights it's yoga, some nights it's uh, boxing, some nights it's what I call burpee hell. Um, I will not not miss doing burpees if I don't take that forward past pandemic. Um, anyways, tonight was a boxing night and I, um, I got my you-know-what handed to me. So if I'm a little foggy, I apologize. Um, what I want to talk about tonight is a little bit more data. Um, it's stuff that I think is just really, really important. I know it's not the most riveting of topics, but it is it is definitely important for what we're doing. Um, I mentioned it a little bit last night that I just needed more time to talk about it. And really what I'm talking about is, is inventory. Um, you've heard it time and time again. Whenever we're going through market changes, there's always discussion about inventory. The amount of homes on the market the inventory, and then even more importantly, the amount of people looking to buy them. Now, the way that we measure inventory is, is in a, a metric that we call the month's supply. So essentially what we take is we take whatever our, whatever type we're trying to compare. So for example, I'm gonna talk tonight once again um, about Chicago as a whole um, in a detached single family home manner and a attached single family home manner condos and townhouses. Now, as I told you last night, I will repeat again, I am committing cardinal sins doing this because obviously each location, each neighborhood has its own pulse and has its own data. Um, but just to give you a little bit of a surface level. So if I'm going to say, look at the, the inventory and the month supply for single family homes for Chicago, essentially what I would do is I would take all of the homes that are actively on the market on one given time. I would take how many homes are going under contract in that month, and I would figure out how many months it would take to absorb that entire inventory so that I would have none. That's how we measure our month supply. Now, when we look at different markets, we know where a relatively balanced market is, we know where an undersupplied market is, and we know where an oversupplied market is. Typically in Chicago, we look around six months as a balanced market. That, that feels like a really healthy amount. Um, and, and we tend to see it's a, a relatively neutral market. Six, maybe maybe closer to seven too in that realm is what always feels healthy for us. Now to give you a comparison, um, at the worst parts of our downturn in, in uh, 2009, around that time where our inventory was so grossly large and our demand was so low, um, I'm going to once again just read a little bit of data. Our single family home, I should say more into 2010, right around 2009, 2010, our single family home month supply, uh, that was, let's see, we were almost up to about 18, 18 months then. Um, 18 months, it would have taken 18 months to get through the inventory um, that was out there. And that was obviously a, a hellacious number. Um, when I just told you that six months is balanced, we were way above that. The condo market was up to about 19 months as well. Once again, this is Chicagoland as a whole. Certain sectors within their end, certain types of condos and stuff like that actually saw higher numbers that, uh, than that even. So that was a, a really challenging time. That's what we call an extreme buyer's market because there is so much inventory and it's going to take so much time to absorb them. Now, anything under six months is what we consider an undersupplied market. Um, and that is a market in which we tend to most often look at it as a little bit more of a seller's market in which there's more people that are looking to buy those homes than not. Um, when we have markets like that, that's when we see that the inventory is tighter and homes sell better and usually for a better premium. Now, if I look once again at our year over year numbers, right? Because we're trying to compare back to a non-pre-COVID time. Um, we've seen some interesting dynamics. Now, 
2019 was actually one of the first years that we saw our inventory grow even. Um, we had years before that they were undersupplied specifically even higher in the condo market and that had a lot to do with people renting out their homes, developers building apartments versus condos, just a, a lot of things happening to it. But it's important to note that in 2019, we actually saw our inventory take a, a, a bigger step up, not huge by any means, but a bigger step up. And if I take a look at the average for April, right? Let's take April. Um, if I take a look at the month supply for April, first and foremost, starting in 2018, 2018 was definitely a time that we were undersupplied. In 2018, single family homes, uh, our month supply was four months. As I just told you, six months is a balance. So we're definitely, we were undersupplied in 2018. In 2019, we saw that number go up to 4.1% or 4.1 months, excuse me. Um, so we saw a little bit of growth there, not much, but a little bit. In 2020 April, not surprising, we see things are going down in terms of inventory, but our inventory is down to 3.2 months. That is that is a very hot market. There's not as many homes for people, and that is in relation to the people that are looking for, to buy them. So it's not like just the homes that are on the market are down and there's nobody buying them. That's the relationship between the two. So that we know from a single family home perspective, that market is, is, is feeling undersupplied, which is why we are seeing a lot of homes are selling very well in it. Now, if I take a look at the condos and townhomes, um, a little bit of a different perspective. If I go back to 2018, April 2018, the month supply was down to 3.5, very, very low. Now, as I briefly mentioned, and I could get into this conversation for a long time, that had to do with some rental aspects, what developers were building, a lot of stuff like that, but it was excessively low. We saw a decent growth in 2019, up to 4.4 months. That growth was a 20, 25% growth that was needed. And we actually saw that market balance out a little bit last year where homes were sitting on the market for just a little bit longer, still under supplied, but a little bit closer to that balance point. Now, fast forward to 2020, and we've seen a 9% drop in that again. Now we're down, April dies down to four months. So that's one of the things we talk about month supply. We talk about inventory, how we measure it. Inventory in the month supply is the amount of homes looking to be sold and the amount of people buying them. And this is what we would consider an undersupplied market. Just important for us to know that still confirms that there's interest out there. There's people buying and everything like that. Um, and it's telling us that we don't have as many homes as we need to to sell people. And that's part of what's giving us confidence. Anyways. Uh, like I said, not the most riveting of topic, but a really, really important one and one that we will definitely keep tracking as we move through this. Um, that is all for tonight. So be kind. Be kind to one another. Be kind to yourself. Take care of one another. Take care of yourself. Be smart in your social distancing. It is so, so important. Um, be proud of your essential workers your first responders, the people that are out there doing amazing work. Um, I am, as always, privileged and honored to be a part of this with you. Um, we are we are doing it. We are stronger today than we were yesterday, and we will be even more so tomorrow. So with that in mind, have a wonderful evening, have a wonderful day, and I will see you here tomorrow.